think polygons are overrated? Here are the best pixel art games to play on PC. We've reached a time where games have never looked better. The realism of every face, every blade of grass, hell, every pore on a character's skin is unparalleled. And while that's an incredible feat we love to see, it'll never replace other artistic styles, especially the icon of all gaming, pixel art. From a requirement of games of yore to a stylistic choice for retro or cool-looking games today, we've loved every little square. By now, there have been hundreds of games that use the style, but within those, there are a few that took things to the next level, the Da Vinci's of 8 and 16 bits. If aesthetics in general are your thing, then you'll want to join us on the Logitech G channel by hitting subscribe, as there's something we love too. Okay, let's join the dots and jump into the best looking pixel art games. When you think about brilliant pixel games, Stardew Valley is high on the list for sinking hours into blueberry harvesting and fishing. However, we probably wouldn't spend as much time in Concerned Apes World if it didn't look so darn beautiful. No detail has been missed, every single pixel has been considered. This makes just wandering around, neglecting your chickens and fields so special. You have to take a moment to appreciate every little thing the village has to offer, or to soak up the soothing secret forest. Yes, there are a few things such as grandpa's bed that have become a running joke, but we do it out of love because pretty much everything is pixel perfect, so we couldn't have asked for a better game to sell our soul to. Must make more mayonnaise. From a happy farmstead to a hallowed land of twisted creatures, Blasphemous might not have as wide a colour palette as Stardew, but it is breathtaking in its own right. This Metroidvania is set in a land heavily influenced by the weirder sides of Roman Catholic religious iconography. That divine will, equally pious and cruel, which we could not and will never be able to unravel. From shrines on barren snowy mountaintops to accursed beings clinging to life, each image will stick in your mind. And that's not even touching on the creatively gruesome bosses. This guy? Horrifying. Stylistically, it's a sinful breath of fresh air. We haven't seen many wraiths shackled to bells before, and as much as we love them, we're probably not in a hurry to see many more. Blasphemous feels like stepping into a Hieronymus Bosch painting to discover what's around the corner. Surprise! It's as beautifully horrifying as all the rest. Welcome to hell. We're having a great time. Do not fret for me. The cold is merciful, for it relieves our pain and numbs us before it leads us to our deaths. From some old-school pixels to futuristic fantasy, Hyper Light Drifter is like sci-fi Zelda where you face increasingly difficult monsters through a variety of crumbling locations. And these are what you'd put on the postcard home. Every single place is atmospheric and creative and shows off exactly why pixels can still compete with polygons. You'll never forget walking into the lake area for the first time. The water is so inviting you just have to stop and stare for a while. Or in our case, accidentally jump him. Hyperlight Drifter needs to look especially good as there are no speech or text. Visuals are all you have to guide you. Conversations are strings of images, maps have symbols you master, and it all really immerses you in learning the visual language of the game, which will reveal its influences such as the Studio Ghibli hints with Nausicaa-esque foes and Lapita ruins. Just not quite as relaxing as the films. Oh, I'm dead again. The last shows that pixels don't need to be ultra detailed to leave you reeling. The style is simple but perfectly captures the mountain around you and the gradually evolving levels. At first we only have a few colours, with greys for the background, blue and whites for the mountainside, and Madeline's red hair. Yet it's all we need. They're visuals that stick with us and evoke perhaps more emotion than the best realistic graphics can. Sometimes it's better to see just what you need. Celeste takes us beyond the snowy walls through a variety of incredibly unique levels and toyed with our emotions along the way. You know it has to be something special to keep us wall jumping and failing over and over for this many hours. Just nearly, uh, never mind. 
For a 2D game, Dead Cells sure packs a lot in. As a roguelike metroidvania, you spend a lot of time going through the same places, but with a mix of procedural generation and incredibly detailed pixel art, it never gets boring. Although, to be fair, most of the time you're too busy trying to stay alive to notice the art, but it does eventually sink in. Each brick is an individual shape making up the wall. Light filters through doorways like magic. The trees fade in and out of the mist. Everything has been considered, and we consider it amazing. We haven't even started on the animations as we jump through portals or watch leaves fall while wandering through the forest. Dead Cells has the kind of art that you want to spend hours looking at, and as you die over and over, you will. Back to the start, at least it looks nice. It may be the oldest on this list, but it's also one of the most iconic works of pixel art. Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery is an adventure through this absolutely gorgeous pixelated countryside. The muted colors and slower pace of it all makes for a calming game even when faced with shadowy beasts. You work things out gradually, searching the world for clues or piecing together bits of lore from the narrator and your observations. And it couldn't be any other way. Super Brothers is ethereal, it's like being in a dream. Despite like tons of other people playing it, it feels like a personal journey. One that may be short, but will stick with you. Maybe because it's still our desktop background, but who really knows? If you've yet to play A Short Hike, you're in for such a treat. This is an adventure game about reaching the top of the mountain, but the real reward, of course, is the journey along the way. As you leave the cabin behind, a tiny yet densely pixelated world opens before you to explore. You're half aiming to get more feathers to level up and fly higher, but quite quickly you abandon any real goal to just have fun. Part of what makes you embrace this so fully is the art direction. You want to explore to find more coins and shells, but also just to see more. A short hike may not be the most detailed game on this list, but it somehow captures the closest feeling to being outside on a sunny day. Like an impressionist painting, everything you need is there, you just fill in the blanks. Moonlighter is a genre hybrid between dungeon delver and shop management. You play as Will, who runs a store in the daytime but journeys to mysterious dungeons at night to collect loot to sell. It's an incredibly compelling loop as one feeds into the other, always making you want to venture further to find more. But we certainly wouldn't put our lives in danger quite as much if the whole thing wasn't so charming. But the pixel world of the town is the heart of every medieval-esque RPG. If we could leave our lives behind to wander through the grassy streets, we would. Then of course are the randomly generated dungeons each with a different theme to keep you guessing. Don't be surprised if one day we just disappear into Moonlighter's world because it's everything we dream of, just so you know where to redirect our mail. Okay, if you want pretty pixels, have we got pretty pixels? Our boy is beautiful. It's detailed. Light and shadows play on the backgrounds. The grass looks so textured we want to reach out and touch it. Our boy knows we want to live in this fantasy world and makes us really feel like we're there. This is a platforming adventure all set in the sky with floating lands and has our sweet owl-winged protagonist Otis to solve puzzles and fight baddies along the way. Out of all the games on this list, Owl Boy is the one you'll be searching for wallpapers of to keep those sun-drenched clouds in view for as long as possible. Even when something bad happens, it's exciting because you get even more beautiful art to enjoy. Oh no, people are attacking. Guess we'll just have to hang out over here and enjoy looking at their ships. Save your comments, don't worry, it's here. Octopath Traveler is probably top of the pixel art list for most people, and well, you can see why. It's a JRPG that takes you on an epic journey across the world as one of the eight travelers, discovering each of their personal stories along the way. And what a world it is! Octopath 16-bit pixels look incredible incredible no matter the environment. There's dynamic lighting. Effects such as snow are beautiful enough that we're happy to close our curtains to actual weather and enjoy the digital one. All this gives near unparalleled depth to environments. If we had a second game that was just walking around for hours on end, we'd be happy. Although our storage wouldn't as it's already struggling with the amount of screenshots we save, we're not sorry. That treasure won't steal itself. 
So those are the pixel art games we put in our own personal art gallery. What's your pixel Mona Lisa? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed, give this video a like, subscribe to Logitech G and hit the notification bell to make sure you're up to date with all our latest releases. Time for just a few more screenshots. What next?